Hi, today we have with us Dr. Anubha, who cleared her BDS in 2019 from Government Dental College and Hospital Amritsar. She has now joined New York University DDS program in 2022. She is here to motivate the young BDS graduates that it is possible to get into a DDS course straight after BDS. She's going to talk about how she improved her resume, she worked on a bench test, and most importantly, how to give the interview in these dental schools. The reason being, she got into four interviews with these dental schools and cleared three of them. I'm Dr. Satish Kumar. This is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. Hi, Dr. Anubha. It's amazing that you've taken time from your schedule to join us today. I know you're not just doing DDS. You put your hand into a lot of things and are trying to expand your horizons. So it is amazing that you've taken time and joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, it's, so my it's a nice, nice uh, opportunity for people to know, you know, what options uh, there are after graduating, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Great. Uh, so you're among the rare few who straight after BDS got into DDS with no experience as such working in a private practice or doing any masters, having a lot of gap in between. Because a lot of people have this opinion that you have to have some experience after BDS if you want to go into DDS. So how did you do it in the first attempt itself? Okay, so I feel what universities actually are uh, looking at is your overall profile. They're not just looking at uh, not even your grades, you know, it's not the only thing they're looking for. They uh, look at you as an overall person, what you are uh, other than dentistry as well, you know. So uh, whatever resources you have, whatever uh, you have done, you have to present yourself in a way that they would think that they want this candidate. You have to convince them that you will be a good candidate for them, right? So just uh, while you are in college, you can uh, focus on getting a good grade, good GPA, and you can focus on co-curricular activities like that, or you can focus on outreach, you can do conference as much as you can. So what I did was when I came here, I was here like a week after I graduated, after my internship ended. So what I did was I came here, I started practicing for my uh, part one and part two. At that time, we had part one and part two. Uh, so once I was done, like within, I don't, I didn't take too much time because during internship, I was preparing for my uh, NBD exams. So I came here, uh, once I was done, I started looking for, you know, observership opportunities in like nearby areas, looking for dentists who would let me, you know, shadow them. It depends on your visa. It depends on uh, if you can work or not so luckily i was able to work so whatever state you are in i searched for the requirements so after i was done observing i was assisting and uh, i worked for like four in four offices for a year that's great um, so you're saying to strengthen your resume basically you have to do outreach programs you have to do start get a good gpa score you have to clear your INBD and you have to show certain extracurricular activities like you're interested in learning dentistry. In your case, you were there. So you got the option of doing observation that's shadowing and you worked in a multiple clinics. So if we are not in US, the same things we can do in India as well to strengthen our resume, right? Yes. So I feel uh, people who have the chance of working as a dentist, uh, I would definitely recommend for them to work for at least one or two years because there are some universities that have specific requirement. Like they would, they want you to have, you know, at least one year or two years of experience for applying. So I wasn't okay. able to apply to those universities. I was very uh, specific about the universities I was choosing to apply, you know, but um uh, while you're choosing like which state you want to go in, what program you want to apply to, you can always go to CAPIT, like that's a centralized application and you can find program directory there. And usually everything they would want to, you know, for you to have before applying, it's almost everything is there. So you can Understood. just take care of it. Yeah, so there were a lot of universities that wanted me to have at least one or two years of experience as a working dentist, not as an assistant, not as a hygienist. So it will be nice if you could work back home. Uh, and Got yes, that. 
So yeah. basically, we should go through the list of requirements in CAPID and then select the universities accordingly. So people who are directly getting out of BDS, they would have lesser universities they can apply to. So they should be specific about targeting those universities, right? It will be written in there like we need at least one year experience. So, you know, you, you cannot apply there. There's no point. But yeah, you know, there are some universities like University of Pennsylvania. Someone told me that they don't take any fresh grads, but I was interviewed there. So like I wouldn't want everyone to just go by. Uh, I'm not saying don't talk to people, connect with people. They can be very helpful no information what they have to offer but don't limit yourself just because someone is telling you you know like this cannot be done like there is nothing like that no one knows a specific recipe for this no one knows a specific you know profile set for this like this you need to have this otherwise you cannot there's nothing like that understood so you have to strengthen your resume as much as you can but there is no set practice of you do this 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 and you're in so there's no set yeah. practice but you can strengthen it based on it very great advice. That's what, that's what makes you, you, you know, you just have to have that personal component in your profile. Got that. Uh, now you went directly after you finished your internship from here to the US. Okay. And you gave your NBD exam that was part one, part two at that point of time. And then your bench test as well. Okay. So how did you prepare for your bench test? Because you had no clinical practical experience on a private practice in India. How did you go about preparing for your bench test? Before you listen to the answer to the question, if you like this video, please hit the like button below because we put in a lot of effort to come up with these videos. And I'm sure if you want to take your career to the next level after BDS, you're subscribed to our channel. If not, do that right now. So first of all, uh, I graduated from GDC. I had like very good clinical exposure. I've had great mentors, but, uh, but there were some things that we just don't do back home, you know? So when I applied to universities, I searched through the Facebook groups of what could be the potential uh, things they can ask for in bench test. There are a lot of lists you will find and like, Facebook groups and everything. People share their experiences. That's why it's very important to connect with people, you know, just, just see what they have to say, connect with people who are in the university. I tried to contact people who were in the universities I was applying to and they told me there could be crowns, they could be like, they cannot be specific, I know that, but at least to get an idea of what you need to do, right? So since I was working, I didn't have time to uh, join any courses, but I do know there's like Stevenson's, Duggan's, there's ODA in India, there are great resources to prepare for, uh, the, uh, for the bench. But personally, uh, I just had that home setup of, you know, everything I needed to have for me to prepare a crown or something like I had a foot pedal, I had a compressor, I had typodons, like replacement teeth. So you bought mounting. a clinic home? Yeah, kind of, like it was literally a mini <laughs> clinic for me. And like I had a handpiece. And um, so the office I was working at, you know, I would sometimes whenever I get a chance, I just took their permission and practice there. If, you know, at night I was... I like I got free you know something like that you just make do with whatever you have so I was working with amazing dentists I showed them my preps to for them to critique that to see you know how I was doing I saw a lot of YouTube videos um, to you know see how they do it here there are uh, on the ADA you can find the guidelines they want you to follow you know when you're preparing so this is how you can prepare. There is a list you, you can find for specific universities. So you can just practice. Got it. So you basically have to find each universities which you are applying for their bench test, uh, what all they are asking for, and you prepare according to that. Uh, so Usually, it's, I'm sorry for getting Yeah, it. sure. Uh, like it's not, uh, you cannot predict what you're going to get. Even the list they give, this is just an you know, give, give you an idea of what they had a previous year. But oh, okay. it might not be same, you know, so yeah. So you have to prepare for everything basically. So at least I knew they were looking for gold crown. At least I knew they were looking for class two, you know, like that. I didn't know which two. I didn't know if there was PFM, it was interior or posterior. Like, you know, you don't know those things, but at least you know if they are looking for serving or not, you know, like things like that so you can just practice accordingly yeah after the bench test comes the interview okay 
you were called for four interviews and you cracked three of them as a fresh bds pass out that is one thing which a lot of dentists would be aspire to do how did you crack those interviews what were the type of questions you were asked and how do you make yourself stand out in these interviews so uh, like i was saying earlier uh, you have to present yourself in a way that would show your personal you know your personality what you have done that i think the interviewers are people who just want to know you they want to know if this person can come to our program and you know do something so the thing i did was yeah so i didn't take any coaching for the interview prep i know there are resources that are available if you want to you know consult them they're great but for me um so like yeah so i connected with people i asked about their experiences i knew what kind of questions they usually ask in the interviews but like that could be different like very different depending on who is interviewing you right so don't sound rehearsed just tell them about yourself tell them about your journey there were so many people like one person literally asked me when you were born okay so tell me your journey from then so it's just like you know it could be anything it could be what were the other interesting questions you were asked other than your entire journey from when you were born so uh, so before uh, going into dental school i was in national cadet corps so one interview was just like i want to know about that so it like you know it could be anything anything and one person was like he he genuinely wanted to know how it works you know in the other country and for some people um uh, i had some um uh, like article published they wanted me to focus on that like so what do you learn and then there were some people who want to maybe they want to make sure if i've worked in the offices or not but they want me to you know give me the like the dates and what did i do in those offices you have to be genuine in what you are writing in your you know the cv because so you are basically trying write. to see your fake or you're just truly what you written yeah they wanted me to uh, because you know there was a person who was like how can you work at four offices like how is that possible so i told him how i work you know i was like okay i was working in monday wednesday like this time and saturday here like i was also working on weekends so that's what made sense to him so don't get intimidated about by what kind of question they are asking if you are genuine you will definitely have an answer and uh, they just yeah so they just want to see if what their goals are that align with yours or not So if i am saying i want to do outreach programs if i'm saying i like what you guys do in your university i want to be a part of it and i have things in my profile that you know resonate or connect with that so obviously they would be like yeah this person is genuine they want to do this they they actually want to do this so yeah so there were no dental questions asked uh for some interviews uh, like for alabama there were uh, questions like they have a, a proper clinical um uh, like half an hour is for the clinical questions they would give you x-rays oh. give you um uh, you know how would you diagnose this uh you know how about okay what are the treatment options you might give you 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 don't want to uh sound too rushed because you know you want to take your time you want to see what you see there you just have to be you know, you know like you do so Even so they're basically you testing that, your basic clinical diagnosis. They wanted to see how I approach a problem. They wanted to see okay. how I would, uh, you know, approach it. Like they were, she was telling me, if I'm your patient, how would you tell this to me? If I had cancer, how would you, you know, tell this to me? You, you saw a lesion. What would you say? So you know, these types of things they want to see how you approach a problem, how you interact. There were. a uh, few questions about brushing technique like she, she like here and there a lot of questions were there so uh, in colombia there wasn't anything there was just they wanted to know about uh, me about my strengths about the outreach i've done there were no clinical questions for nyu uh, for nyu there were a lot of questions but not clinical they didn't have bench either alabama had bench uh, so yeah so for uh, for upen it was they were amazing every every faculty is amazing so they they were also uh, mostly focus on your personal uh, things you know like what makes you you 
what makes you yeah that's so it's you have to have your unique personality you should be comfortable portraying it in front of them and you should not come across as fake so if your goals and your goals match then they would basically hire you uh yeah, that's very I, good advice I, because i've gone through a lot of people who don't tell so much in depth about how to go about an interview so that's a really good advice out there okay. uh my next question to you is if you had to look back in your journey and advise yourself when you were just starting it out so there'll be many people who are where you were say 2 years 3 years ago what would be your advice to that young intern or a fourth year student who's just graduating so um uh... in third year or second year go to as much outreach programs you can like i had a lot of clinical uh, like community programs as well but i wish i could attend more conferences like that maybe present more posters be involved in more articles you know the research there are a lot of post graduate students who are always doing research regarding their thesis so you could all it with them you know it will be nice to have your name there for you to have that kind of experience you know like for me i didn't had any background in research so if you can get anything there it will be you know very nice uh, other than that you could start early with your preparation i decided when i was in final year that i wanted to come to states so you if you are sure you can just start connecting with people it doesn't matter where you are right like facebook groups are available anywhere so you can just connect with people at least you know uh, delineate the states you want to go to at least have the programs ready at least have your personal statement ready those things take a lot of time so if you have those things it will be very quick for you when you are actually applying and connect with people you know it's it's very important to see what people are doing at this time you know the my experiences would be different from people who are applying now so like just see what programs you want to apply to see what people are doing there what kind of resources the school is providing it's very important you know if you want to let's see graduate and do practice and do residency does that college offer that residency or not you know like you have to choose your programs wisely so researching is very important which a lot of people skip yes the researching about like yeah any research experience is very important and researching about the program and the state you are going to that's that's equally Good. important both researches are important uh it was <laughs> nice that you've taken out time from your schedule and joined us thank you for spending time with us thank you for having me here i hope i was able to give some insight but you, like anyone can reach me at any time you know we like a lot of people would be very very willing to help you guys out with you know whatever we have because someone did this for us you know so uh, it would be very nice if i could help someone with the 100% person. so we will share your instagram page on our instagram page so anyone who wants to follow her can go and check that out Thank you thank you for being Absolutely. with us. Yeah. Thank you for having me. If you like this video do not forget to go and check out our other video about getting into USA after BDS. I'm sure you'll enjoy it.